Hey everyone, my name is Jake. If you're new here, this is FIFA America. We talk about the US men's national team. So make sure to subscribe if that content is something you wanna see more of. Today we have a really special interview with Jonathan JT Tompkinson. He's the captain of the U23 Norwich team, but he's made the bench a few times, hasn't quite broken in to make his debut yet for the first team, but he's gonna talk about that, how he went from Texas to Norwich, his big ambitions for his career, and just getting you to learn more about him outside of soccer. So thanks guys so much. Like the video so more people can find it. If we could get 400 likes today, that would be amazing. And so you can watch this uninterrupted. We're going to go straight to our sponsor, brought to you by Bet Online. Our partners at Bet Online continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all of the latest sports developments, including updated odds on the NBA playoffs, fights, and even next season's fixtures. And don't forget that Major League Baseball is back as well. Who are you picking to win the World Series this year? Bet Online is your continued source for all your sports wagering needs, including live betting and your favorite Vegas casino and poker games. It's super easy to get started, so head to the website today or use your mobile device to join and use our promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, where the game starts. Jonathan Tompkinson, thank you so much for joining the channel, the Norwich U23 captain. Just to introduce yourself to the fans and people that maybe aren't as diehard and have been following your your career as of now, just tell us who you are, what you're all about, maybe where you grew up and how you got to Norwich in the first place. Yeah, so my name is Jonathan. Uh, I grew up in Plano, Texas for most of my life. Um, my dad's from England, mother's from America. So that's, you know, playing in England's kind of always been my dream. Um, you know, I grew up watching the Premier League kind of every weekend, you know, watching it in the morning and stuff like that while having my breakfast. Um, so I kind of idolize it a bit. And yeah, I've been playing from the age of three and I've never stopped then. Um, kind of played everywhere on the pitch, started out as more of a center midfielder and then eventually transitioned my way into the back. Um, so right now I'm playing center back and yeah, playing for Norwich. Nice. And you have a bit of an English accent. So how long have you spent in England versus growing up in Texas? What did that look like? Um, yeah, so I've spent most of my life in Texas. Obviously, uh, I've got an English accent in the house with me everywhere I go. Um, <laughs> and when I was younger for a bit, I also lived in England for about a year, so not too long. Um, and then I moved over here fully in 2019. That was when I signed at Norwich. Um, but I used to spend okay. summers coming to England as a kid to visit my grandparents and stuff like that as well. Eventually, you're going to sound like someone like Brad Guzan, who just has an amalgamation of five different accents. But, yeah, my dad calls it the, the mid-Atlantic. <laughs> nice. So one thing I've noticed is that a ton of players from Texas and that have grown up in Texas, gone through some of the academies that are that are there, are becoming really great soccer prospects. What did you see just growing up in that area? Was there something special about it that we should all be paying attention to, or is it just because it's a hotbed for for so much talent and so many teams there that kind of helped um, your development? Yeah, I think, to be fair, there's quite a lot. Like, soccer is a very big thing in Texas. Like, obviously, American football is huge. Um, but soccer is actually quite big for, for youth players and stuff like that. And, you know, academies like FC Dallas have done a fantastic job of pushing younger players through. And it's just an extremely competitive environment. So, you know, teams like Solar, where I was at, we, we want to go head-to-head with FC Dallas every year. And so there's just a big kind of competitive edge out there. Um, and, you know, there's so many players as well. So it seems like there's a lot of good players coming out for sure. I definitely agree. I'm not sure why it's there's good talent coming out, but there's definitely a lot of us there. And um, I think everyone kind of wants to be the best, of course. Yeah, definitely. So how has this season been for you? I mean, you're captaining the U23 team at Norwich, but you've also made the bench a few times for the senior team. You haven't quite made that debut yet. And it looks like the senior team will be getting relegated. So just like give us the overview generally, how's the season been for you personally? Um, definitely, definitely probably I'd say my most successful season uh, in terms of, you know, every time I've been healthy, I've uh, played any minute I can in the 23s. Um, so, yeah, and to, to have the armband as well is really special to me. Um, I do want to be seen as a leader for the team and everything like that. And, you know, this year as well, I've got a couple of goals under my belt. Which is which is really nice, and then yeah, um, the first team's obviously the ultimate goal, and so you know even though they're having a rough patch right now, you know the belief is still there that we can stay up. Um, not sure if it will happen; you never know. They could stay up or they might go down, 
But um, on a personal note, I'm just concerned about the staying there. Um, so I've kind of been in and out of training most of the season. I uh, spent the entire preseason with them, which was a great experience in itself. And then, yeah, to, to make the bench a few times, uh, it feels like I'm getting closer every day. So I just have to keep my head down and keep working at it. Yeah. Do you feel like that opportunity is coming soon? Or like personally for you, how close do you feel like you are to, to getting those first team minutes? It's hard to say. Um, you know, the biggest way I've kind of looked at it is when I first trained with the first team last season, I felt like I was doing everything I could to survive a training session. Whereas this season, I felt like I could impact the training session. Um, and so instead of, you know, trying not to harm my team, I'm now trying to help my team win the game. So in terms of like my improvement, I can see that I've definitely improved. So it's one of those ones where I don't feel miles off it, but I do have players who have a lot more experience ahead of me. Mm -hmm. And so it's, you know, experience is going to, is going to win at the end of the day, especially in when it's such yeah. a cutthroat environment. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about the U23 season so far and how that's gone. Yeah. Uh, it's been a, a, a really good season so far. Definitely the best season I've had uh, at Norwich. Um, so, you know, in the league, I think we're probably about third right now um but we were second for most of the season which is a really big achievement because last season i think we were last or second last something like that um so it's been a great season you know it's a great group of lads we, we all get on really well i think our chemistry is a big thing um and yeah so we're really chasing that promotion um we've got about two games left and i think it's really important that we win both of them and then it's a, a playoff for that final spot so Fingers crossed we get the job done. And then I'm really hoping for a promotion. That would be a big achievement for me, you know, getting a little Premier League medal. I would love that. <laughs> and with youth teams, usually like the performances seem to be a bit more volatile. So if you ended last season kind of towards the bottom, but you're finishing this season towards the top, what's been the biggest change for the team? Um, we've had a completely new system this year. So I think last year we played 4-4-2 most of the season or 4-2-3-1. This year we're playing more of a 4-4-2 diamond. Um, so it's, it's to be fair, it's quite a tough formation in terms of defending because you're very exposed to the switch. Um, but it's also gotten the best out of us because it's all about hard work. And I think that's brought a lot of unity to the team because if one person is not doing their job, it all goes south. Um, and so we all hold each other accountable. So when it's working, it's great. Um, and to be fair, like you said, it is a bit volatile. So, you know, we've had games before where we beat Fulham, who won the league by, you know, 20 odd points this year. And then we went and lost to Birmingham the next week. Um, so <laughs> it's it's a bit it's a bit interesting, uh, especially because some teams bring first team players up and down. Um, mm -hmm. So a lot of things can change very change very quickly. Um, but yeah, the big thing for me is I think probably the system and then it's a pretty, n not new group of players, but the team is completely different. Um, we've had a lot of players either get released or leave on loan. And, um, so the players that are coming up from the 18s, they've all been together since they were nearly nine years old. Mm -hmm. So the chemistry in that group is really tight. And I think it's crucial, uh, when you're playing well. Like it's, it's all about team performances, not individual performances. And that's what gets you success. Yeah. And one last question around that is you are the team captain for, for that team. What, what do you think made the coach or the team instill that confidence in you specifically? Um, I think there's a few things. Um, so I'm probably the most senior guy on the team in terms of how many games I've played for the 23 since I've been here. Um, and as well as that, I think I'm quite vocal as a player. Um, you know, I want my teams to be organized and everyone doing doing their jobs. So I'm gonna hold people accountable. You know, if they're messing up, I'm gonna I'm gonna let them know, and it might not be too friendly. Um, but yeah, I think leadership is a big thing I've been working on since I've probably probably since I went to Solo, really, actually. Um, and so I try to make that a big part of my game as well. Awesome. So you're a dual national English American. The World Cup is obviously coming up where we have a draw where both teams are in the same group. Do you see yourself kind of leaning towards being a fan of one team versus the other? Yeah, definitely. Um, I do see myself leaning more towards America. 
Um, you know, as much as I, I love both sides, I think I'm definitely American at the end of the day. That's where I spent most of my life. That's, you know, where I, I go home to America in summers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll be pulling for both sides, but I might be pulling for America when they play against <laughs> England. <laughs> I, I won't make you choose if you don't want to today, but like if the call comes from both teams, um, is it just kind of up in the air at this point? Yeah, I mean, I, def I haven't had a call from England at this point, so at the moment there's there's nothing to consider. Um, and I've really enjoyed every moment when I've been with America. So I'm not sure what the future holds, but as of now, I'm, I'm fully American. Gotcha. So what has the experience been like with those youth, youth national teams? Yeah, uh, it's been really good. Um, it's, a, it's a great environment to be a part of, and it's kind of nice you know, as you get older, having like someone who comes from the same place as you is, you know, it's, you have an experience to share automatically. Um, and it's a really proud feeling to, to play for your country. Like I think of all the teammates who I've played with before, we've all talked about like, oh, I really wish I could be with the national team and stuff like that. And so for it to, to finally happen was kind of like a big achievement for me. And then especially in my, my last cap when I was captain for those three games, that mm -hmm. was a that was a really kind of proud and honored feeling. Um, but I do enjoy playing and it's also like one of those things where having international breaks, I think a lot of fans kind of hate it because, you know, they love club football, but for me, I kind of like it. It's almost like a healthy break. So, yeah. you know, I'll be having, I'll be enjoying my club football and then I'll go away, enjoy my time internationally and then come back and I can carry on that love for club football as well. Whereas like this season, it's been a bit more challenging in terms of like trying to stay fully focused on the club because sometimes it does weigh you down a bit. Mm hmm yeah, definitely. So are you just in terms of your personal goals? I, I would imagine that playing for the national team at some point is a goal of yours. Um, right now, maybe it's a little too early, but the center back position is one that is still kind of being figured out for the U.S. national team. Do you see yourself kind of looking towards 2026 as that's where you need to be and kind of thinking about the next four or five years as how you can make it enough of an impact to get into the team? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I have big ambitions. And so, you know, because of it's kind of a bit tough for my age group now to kind of get any camps going or any games. Um, I just look at it now as I need to do everything I can to be getting on that first team radar. So, you know, I need to take care of business here. And, you know, I want to try and be playing first team football next season, not just club, but hopefully international as well. Um, you know, yeah. obviously it's going to be tough because we have a World Cup coming up. Um, but like I said, yeah, big ambitions and I'm, I'm very driven to, to try and make that a reality. Yeah. Maybe if I could just give you like freedom to talk about what those ambitions are outside of the national team. Yeah. Um, so club ambitions, you know, I want to play in the Champions League and stuff like that. You know, Premier League is obviously my dream, but, you know, I want to go right to the top. Um, my biggest thing is I want to play games. So, you know, I'm, I might not end up at that Champions League level. You never know. But that's my dream and I want to do anything I can to, to get there. But yeah, the big thing for me right now is just playing games and playing games that, that matter and mean something. So although 23s, you know, that means a lot to me as well. Um, things that really matter to me are trying to play first team games, you know, getting minutes with our first team or maybe going on loan, who knows. Um, but yeah, I yeah. definitely want to be playing first team football soon. I think I'm, I'm ready for it and I'm hungry for it. Maybe let's just touch on that very quickly because I, so I did a scouting video of you, um, talked about some of the strengths that you have. And it seemed like at points it was almost easy for you in the U23 league. Uh, I think that's Premier League too, right? They, yeah. they would call it. Um, like your your confidence on the ball, your positional awareness just seemed to, to make it a, a slower game for you. So do you feel like at this point there's there's enough there to make that jump to maybe if Norwich isn't ready, do you go on loan? Like, it sounds like minutes and first team minutes is really what you're focusing on now. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I've kind of spoken with my agents about it before and the club. Um, we were trying to go out on loan in January. Um, it didn't quite happen. You know, there were a couple of clubs interested, but I think in terms of like my development and also not wanting to, to force a bad move or anything, they said, you know, I'll stay here and finish up mm -hmm. the season. Um, and, you know, there'll be plenty of opportunities with the first team as well, um, which I've been getting, which is great. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely looking to, uh, to get some first team experience and I'm not too fussy. I just want to be challenged enough and I want it to be at a competitive level. So yeah. um, I'll be a little bit picky in terms of that because I don't want to uh, hinder my development, but I definitely mm -hmm. want to you know, try and go as high as I can. 
We've definitely seen the the full experience of what that can look like for a player, especially as it pertains to the U.S. players. Like maybe someone like Gio Reyna or Christian Pulisic are going at 16 or 17 and getting chances, but maybe players like Alex Mendez or Yuli Linez, they get to a first team really quickly, but they're not really able to break through. So it sounds like you're being really tactical and thoughtful about how you go about your own development. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, everyone's pathway is different. So, you know, as great as it is to see guys breaking through at 16, that's not going to be the case for everyone. You know, it's quite rare, if mm -hmm. anything. So, you know, if my case is I break through at 21, 22 years old, or maybe, you know, next season when I'm still 20, um, that could be the case. But it's, you know, it's different for everyone. Yeah. So I try not to get too distracted by that. Especially for a center back. Um, center backs and goalkeepers historically develop a little bit later into their prime. But, um, Let's talk about you as a player, maybe a little bit to to help people understand what type of center back you are. Um, before we get into strengths and weaknesses, is there a certain player that you really look up to or who you model yourself after? Um, not necessarily. You know, I do admire certain players. Um, so, you know, current players would be like Van Dyke and stuff like that. Um, past players, uh, Rio Ferdinand, uh, his brother Anton Ferdinand as well has been a great mentor to me. Uh, and giving me plenty of advice but and you know i also take plenty of advice off for the players i'm around daily so you know the players in the first team they're more than happy to kind of share knowledge with me which is great um but i do just try to be myself at the end of the day i'll kind of pick up bits and pieces from people to try and help myself succeed but i want to be comfortable with myself and not trying to replicate someone's entire game yeah beautifully said um you, you talked about uh training with the first team sometimes and learning a lot. Are you, I imagine you get some time with Josh Sargent, another American that made the move to Norwich this season? Yeah, definitely. Um, he's a really nice guy. We get on really well. Uh, like I kind of said earlier, you know, having an American companion and stuff like that is really nice because you can automatically relate to things with each other. Um, I had the same kind of thing with Seb Soto when he first came as well, um, which was mm -hmm. nice. You know, we had preseason together and things, but yeah, Josh is a great guy, you know, and he, probably one of the hardest workers in the team as well. So really happy to see yeah. him. Are there other Americans in England that you get along with? I was reading a, an athletic article the other day that talked about Daryl DK when he was injured. He he brought together like some of the injured USMNT players and brought them to England to watch some of the, the US national team games at 2 a.m. But do you have like a an American friend group or any other American players that you really get along with? Uh, yeah, there's a few. Um, so kind of guys who are around my age or <clears throat> a little bit younger um, from the U.S. national team age groups. So um, when Damian Loss was at Fulham, you know, me and him were pretty decent friends, um, mm -hmm. as well as uh, Big C over at Leicester. Um, and I'm also friends with Alex Border at Fulham as well. So it's, mm -hmm. you know, like I said, it's it's nice to keep in contact with these guys um, yeah. for sure. And a lot a of goalkeepers in, in that too. group. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Several goalkeepers made their way here. Um, but yeah, and I speak to a few of the guys over in Germany as well, like uh, Kevin Paredes and stuff like that. Nice. Awesome. That's great that there's kind of like a connection and a network that you guys are building. And that is kind of the future of the national team as well. So to have some of those connections already, if you guys get to those those senior national teams, you'll already have that, that chemistry built. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Um, so in the scouting video, I talked a little bit about um, your ability to read the game in front of you, your positional awareness to kind of snuff out danger in the box, um, and your confidence in playing out of the back, which seems to be really important for a lot of coaches these days and just how they want to play stylistically and tactically. Would you agree that those are your strengths or kind of where do you see yourself in terms of your strengths on the pitch? Yeah, um, I think playing playing out the back is kind of one of my things. Um, like I said earlier, I was a center mid for most of my youth career. Um, so playing with the ball and kind of, you know, I enjoy making those little, uh, incisive passes or breaking lines. That's kind of, that's my bread and butter really. Um, so that's how I would describe my kind of play style. Um, and in terms of defending, I'm not really that guy who's going to smash someone, uh, you know, at every occasion, I'm kind of more than one. I'll try and intercept it or I'll invite the ball over the top and then I'll use my speed to try and pick it up before you get there and stuff like that. That doesn't mean I haven't had to, to learn how to smash people here and there um, uh, because it's definitely about being more complete. But yeah, I try to try to focus more on not fighting you and winning the ball that way. And then definitely just playing out of the back is my thing for sure. 
I mean, I don't want to pigeonhole you into that opportunity, but but that's also something I pointed out is just like um, you're you're tall and strong, but maybe could use some of that those physical traits a little bit more in the battles. But do you see that as an opportunity for yourself, or more that you're just baiting opponents into doing something so that you can use your other skill sets to to win the ball back? I think it kind of depends who I'm up against. If I'm up against, you know, a striker who's six four and you know my weight or or heavier, I'm probably not going to try to fight them because that's what they want. That's that's their advantage. Mm -hmm. I'll you know I'll stay close to you uh, so I can intercept it, but I'm more about uh, you know owning that space kind of in behind and then doing everything I can as well to win it in the front without giving up yeah. the space in behind. Um, and I don't think you necessarily have to be, you know, big just to scrap and stuff like that as well. Like if you look at players like John Stones and even Van Dyke, you know, as big as he is, a lot of his recoveries are based off of interceptions, not wrestling the players. Mm -hmm. Are you a USMNT fan? Like, do you follow the the team throughout qualifying and things like that? Yeah, definitely. So, so what did you make of the qualifying campaign and kind of where the team is at the moment? Um, well, for starters, you know, they got the job done, which is the biggest thing. Um, and it's quite a young group as well. So it is tough um, in terms of not all of them are going to have that experience and know what it takes. Um, and, you know, obviously, I, I'm not saying I do either. Um, so I understand it's going to be difficult. Um, and, you know, they had a few bumps along the way. But the biggest thing is just getting the job done at the end of the day. And they definitely got that done. Um so it's it's nice to see, you know, they're playing good football for most of it. And, you know, there's plenty of goals scored. You know, we should be beating, you know, teams like Costa Rica and stuff like that all the time. Um, and so it'll, it'll definitely come in the next few years for sure. Um, but it's it's massive that they qualified this time around because I think it's a bit of redemption for last time. Yeah, definitely. Hopefully you'll be a part of that next time around as well for the U.S. Yeah. So what are you expecting then? <laughs> yeah, what are you expecting then going into the World Cup? Um, I'm expecting a good performance. You know, the group is going to be tough. It's definitely going to be tough, but I think that they can absolutely make it through to the knockout rounds. Um, you know, it's a lot about belief and then I think trust. And the biggest biggest challenge is just going to get everyone on the same page. I think that's the big the big part about international football that's tough is you have people coming from different systems, different play styles. And it's just making sure everyone's on the same page going into that. Um, and, you know, the chemistry is there. I think the chemistry definitely is there between all of them. They seem like they enjoy playing together. Um, so yeah. hopefully it's just everyone's tactically on the same page for, for the World Cup. So before we go into a little bit more fun speed round, is there anything that we didn't talk about that you kind of want people to understand or know about the game that you're trying to play? Um, I'm not sure, really. I think, yeah, like I said, my, my specific game isn't too much about fighting. I do think I could probably get better at fighting because, like I said, it's it's about being a complete player um, and having that in the locker if I need it. Um, but, yeah, I think I'm just itching to get that, that men's football experience, really. So fingers crossed we'll be there next season for sure. Awesome. Well, hopefully this helps just expand your reach a little bit and more people can be um, anxiously watching and excitedly watching as you make some of those debuts with the first teams. Yeah. All right. So are you ready for a little bit of a speed round? Yes. All right. We're going to get to know JT a little bit better. If you weren't playing soccer, what would you be doing? Um, I think I would definitely try and carry on playing sports. Um, probably basketball, though I'm maybe a bit small for that now. Um, but I did really enjoy that when I was in high school. But without sports i think i'd be a little bit lost maybe doing something with cars or something but school school is not my strong suit i kind of i kind of <laughs> went and enjoyed it a bit but in terms of like going to university and trying to get a degree uh just based on things like math and science that didn't interest me a whole lot yeah so what are your top three hobbies or interests outside of soccer then maybe basketball is one but give us a few others yeah, uh, recently I've been trying to pick up golf. Uh, I'm not the greatest, uh, but Josh Sargent also owes me a round. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I've been I've been going to the driving range recently. I went yesterday, actually. Um, so I've been trying to pick up golf. That's one of my hobbies. Um, I'm quite passionate about cars as well. Um, in school, I took a class where it was basically about the body repairs of cars. And so one of my friends, she had a 1970 El Camino. And we spent eight months of the year fully restoring it. And I actually enjoyed every moment of it, even though at the end of the day, it was mostly just sanding and making sure <laughs> sanding was correct. Um, 
And yeah, I just really enjoy spending time with friends as well as another hobby. Um, so, you know, whether that's me cooking a meal for everyone or we all go out for a meal and stuff like that, uh, that's mm. kind of how I spend most of my time. Awesome. Do you play FIFA at all? Yes, I do. Uh, pro clubs, okay. I think. <laughs> pro clubs, nice. So we're going to switch a little bit to Ultimate Team, but if you had a FIFA card next season, what do you think your rating would be? I actually have one this season. I think if I'm correct, it's a 64 overall um i'm not sure how do you feel about that (laughs) in terms of knowing what fifa's like it's not bad for a first card um but i am i do think they were they were a bit um lenient with the pace i think they could have given me a bit more there (laughs) yeah what 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 pace do you think you should have i mean i back my stuff in a foot race so i'm saying maybe (laughs) as a 70 72 to keep it fair Oh, that's, I was expecting 85. Yeah, no, I mean, I know how FIFA works. So 70 pace for a center back is pretty good. But um, yeah, no, I'm not slow. So I can keep up with most players. <laughs> nice. All right. So from this season or anything else that you've done, name one major highlight or achievement that you're really proud of. Um, There's a few from the season. I think scoring a brace at Carroll Road, um, that's definitely one of them getting on the end of corners has been an issue for me and you know set pieces for you know the last probably two or three years um so to have a couple of headers and a volley under my belt is really impressive for myself um and then i think just the first team involvement as well because it's you know a step closer to my goals and my dreams um so you know first time on the bench was against man united uh at carrow road um you know with a pretty much sold out crowd um that was kind of that was telling me like, well, I'm not, I'm not too far away from it if I keep working. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome to hear. All right, and last one. What would your advice to young American players be looking to follow in your footsteps? Aim big. I think the biggest thing in any any walk of life is just, you know, to aim big and not be afraid of your dreams, but to, to, to kind of chase them and step out of your comfort zone. Um, you know, for me, stepping out of my comfort zone was moving all the way to England when I was just 17 years old. Um, so my family didn't come with me. Uh, they had to stay in America with my brother and stuff like that. So it's, I've had to kind of fight for myself over here. And, you know, it's tough. It's tough. But that's how committed I am to getting towards it. JT, thank you so much for joining us, for taking the time. I hope everyone enjoyed learning a little bit more about you. And I know everyone's going to be pulling for you getting those first team minutes, whether it's this season or next. I'm sure it will happen and we'll all be watching. Thank you for having me. And thanks so much to our sponsor for today's video, Bet Online.